so um, if you've been kind of seeing some of the stuff that I've been doing over the last little while, I've been doing a lot of work with uh, web forms. And I thought I'd share a little bit about some of the things I've been playing around with recently and give you a bit of a sneak peek into how I'm starting to change how we deal with web forms. So initially this started out as a, a bit of a challenge for myself. I wanted to see if uh, I could get any to end to do some stuff that we hadn't really planned on, but because we've got this awesome uh, uh, webhook node, we can do some very, very cool things with it. And so essentially what we've done is we've taken the webhook node and turned it into a web server. And by doing that, I can go in and create a bunch of different forms and get them to start to interact with each other. So what I've got up on the screen here right now is um, kind of a different way that I'm starting to play around with web, uh, web, web forms. And, um, you know, there's typically a uh, way I've done it in the past is all I've had is a form, uh, or sorry, a web hook attached to a set node and that was it. I've started to break things out a little bit here and do a couple of different things. So the first thing is I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a, of a pro tip. I've created a, this set form that will allow me to quickly and easily jump between the production or the test environment that I'm working in. So by simply enabling or disabling this test set form, it'll jump to right now, it's set to deal with the, uh, the test side. If I disable it, it'll automatically jump and use the production side. So no having to jump between different screens, no having to, ju to jump between different um, uh, URLs, it just does it from that quick click, which makes it really nice to work with. The other thing I've done is I've taken and I've broken out my form. Uh, one of the challenges that I've had working with some of my clients is building out this whole form in one set node. And it gets to be a bit cumbersome and people have some challenges around, um, you know, how do they go about and, you know, find what, what piece to work on. You know, we've got the, the uh, designers who are like, hey, I want to play around with the CSS, but I don't know what all, what all this other stuff is. I don't want to break it, you know, and then we've got the developers who want to work on the scripts. So I've started creating this template where I break out the form into these multiple nodes. And so if you want to mess around with the CSS, great, here it is. And you can tweak that. And that, that's all they have to play around with. Um, same thing with the, uh, the web form itself. Uh, you want to go in here and you, you'll notice that this is a little bit more jumbled, but I've got this piece in here. So it's pulling information in that allows it to jump. And so this is where the test comes in. So it'll look for the target and point it either to production or test automatically without having to go in and modify it. You, we've run into some problems in the past where, in fact, I just had this happen last week where I went and did a bunch of stuff, put it into production, and it, it failed when they showed it to the client only because I forgot to set it uh, to production for the web form. So this just handles it all for you. It makes it way easier. Um, and then again, same thing with scripts. If you wanna do some JavaScripts, uh, build them into the form, you can plunk them in there. And then the key that puts it all together is the HTML form which doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot when I just look at it here, but this, all it does is builds it together. So anybody that's worked with HTML um, frameworks or that kind of stuff will notice this is a very similar pa pattern where you have these little chunks and pieces, you put it together and, and then in the end, you have this one piece that throws it all into one that makes it all work. Uh, so what we've, one of the things I'm working on, and this is kind of the predecessor to that, is the is I'm building a uh, n 8 n forms toolkit, which will basically allow you to, it'll have a whole bunch of these set nodes built out for you, and you can drag and drop them into different spots to build your form dynamically, and then it'll just spit out whatever form you want, ready to go. Um, so what I've been doing in the past is I've been using this tool, uh, formbuilder.online. Um, you can download the tool, actually, you keep your own copy. Uh, and 
I use this to you know modify my forms, make different things. And then if you hit save and copy HTML, it'll just copy the HTML straight into your uh, into your clipboard where you can paste it into N8N. So I I'm working on building kind of this out, but instead of using this tool, you'll actually just be able to come into here, drag and drop these different pieces, and away you go. And uh, and just to kind of show a, a little bit here. Uh, one thing to note when you're doing these, because you have two uh, web hooks, when you are doing stuff in your test environment, you have to re-execute every single time that you are accessing the web uh, the form. So if you, for example, if we hit execute here now, and I'm going to refresh my demo, then great, it spits out the form, no problem. But you'll notice here that this is all executed, and this is stopped. So if I go now and I submit my form, because it's set to demo, well, of course I've got these set, I've got to fill them all out. Uh, if I hit submit now, it'll fail because we end up having a, um, uh, it, it's not registered. But if I go back and I execute this now, and I hit submit, then it works fine. So the interesting thing is that I go back here and I disable this and I reset my form. So my form is now working again. I'll have to do a reset. Uh, oops. I'm trying to do this the right way. There we go. And I submit my information because I've changed the change it to point to my service. Okay, so that you notice it didn't go into here. It didn't have to hit execute twice because it actually hit the active the active one just simply because it turned this on and off. So um, I think I'm going to stop it there. I could you know I've got ten minutes. I could go on for ten hours. But I think that we'll leave it there. I'm sure we've, we've got some questions and stuff we can uh, kind of talk about uh, as well.